Good day, everyone. This will be the second on a series of lecture on environmental health. So we're talking about SCRETA and sewage disposal. Based on the Center for Advanced Philippine Studies, these are the different types of sanitation in the Philippines. So when you say you no know, sanitation, we only have hygiene behavior, uh, hand washing. Uh, basic sanitation includes pit latrines and privies. Environmental sanitation includes wastewater treatment system. And ecological sanitation involves the reuse of the wastewater treatment uh, products. What is the global burden of disease when it comes to uh, excreta uh, and waste uh, septage waste management? So around 46% of the world's population, or 1.7 billion, have no access or to do not have uh, basic sanitation services such as private toilets or latrines. Of these, 494 million still defecate in the open, for example, in street gathers, behind bushes, or into open bodies of water. 297,000 children die each year from the aerial diseases because of these open defecation. How about the Philippines? So 83.64% has access to adequ adequate skirt and disposal facilities in the Philippines. 10.8% shared toilet facilities, even in, in urban areas, we, we do have the sharing of toilet facilities. And 2.7% have unimproved sanitary facilities, and 2.6% or 6.3 million households still practice often open defecation in the Philippines. Only 32% of barangays have zero open defecation certification in the Philippines meaning these are the barangays which really has no open defecation uh, in their units. The regions with high proportion of barangays who still practice open defecation. So mind you, this is not the whole barangay, but this simply means that in some areas of the barangays, they still do practice open defecation. So the top will be region 4A, where 94% of the barangays still practice open defecation. Uh, region 4B followed with 92%. Davao was 92.08%. Samuanga, 86.71%. Central Visayas at 85%. Cagayan at 84%. And Central Luzon at 80.34%. Regarding wastewater management in the Philippines, in the Philippines, only 10% of the wastewater is being treated while 58% of the groundwater is contaminated. Only 5% of the total, total population is connected to a sewer network. The vast majority uses flash toilets connected to septic tank. In Metro Manila and NCR, this, is, this has been the case. A lot of houses in Metro Manila is only up to the septic tanks, and the septic tanks is not connected to the sewerage system. Since large treatment and disposal facilities are rare, domestic wastewater is discharged without treatment. This is septage and sewage coverage in Metro Manila. As you can see, uh, this one, this is the percentage of coverage by septage, and this is the percent of coverage by sewage. So this is the sewage system. So as you can see, uh, only a handful of, of uh, places in, in, in Metro Manila has a sewage system. And when the National Water at the Nawasa uh, 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 changed into Manila and Manila Water and was privatized, this is supposed to be part of the uh, project to be undertaken by both Manila and Manila Water. But unfortunately, up to now, they are not up to speed in, in making the sewage system in Metro Manila possible. Okay. So... These are the different types of sanitary facilities that we have in the Philippines and the world. First, we have the bucket latrine. So why is called bucket latrine? As you can see from the picture, it's literally a bucket. So there's the bucket and you are going to defecate into the bucket and then you will uh, you will throw the bucket, the, the contents of the bucket in the river. Okay, so this is part of the open defecation system in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, pero hindi naman social na bucket latrine as you can see from this picture so this is a, a medyo social na bucket latrine but still a bucket latrine this is the pit latrine without slabs so just an open space where people will defecate okay. 
and we have the overhanging latrines. So you can see a lot of these among the steros in 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 uh, Metro Manila. So meron din medyo social, pero this is not in Metro Manila anymore. Okay, so the other pictures are in Metro Manila. And we have the trench latrine. So this is an example of the trench latrine. If you are a boy scout or a girl scout during jamborees, I'm sure you have experienced this one. Okay, so when we have boy scouts and, and girl scouts, uh, the first thing that we do in jamborees is to create a pit for the open latrines. Okay, yeah. And during disaster operations also, we also create this uh, trench latrine. So in one of the disasters in the Philippines, uh, this is what we, we did. Okay, so after the mudslide uh, buried the whole town, so we went there and the very first thing that we did was create a, a trench latrine for the evacuees. This is an example of a floating toilet in Laguna. Okay. So during the flooding, so they have they have constructed this floating toilet in Laguna so that people can still have uh, a, a, a comfort room uh, during floods. And we have the VIP latrine. Okay. So dito pang VIP. It's not because it's called VIP latrine and it's for VIP. Uh, VIP uh, corresponds to ventilated improved pit latrine. So when you say ventilated, there is a vent pipe. Okay, so that the nasty odor of defecation will not persist in dun, dun sa CR. Okay, so this vent, vent pipe will bring out the air outside. Okay, so all the modern comfort rooms have this vent pipe. You can see the, the end of the vent pipe uh, at the roof. Okay. So these are examples of VIP latrines. We also have double pit latrines. So what are double pit latrines? Double pit latrines have two septic tanks. So why do you need two septic tanks? So when the other septic tank is full, then you can just go to the other septic tank. Okay. So that's a double pit latrine. Okay, so this is an example of the double pit latrine also, like double pit latrine. So once this septic tank is full, then they will just uh, transfer this whole uh, CR to the other side. Okay. Yeah, so that's an example of a double pit latrine. And the one you are more, more familiar with, uh, the poor flush flash uh, toilet uh, but this one uh, we still use buckets of water for for poor flush toilets yeah. then we have the modern composting toilets so uh, for the modern composting toilets the 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 refuse will now become as a compost that can be used as fertilizer for plants so there, that's an example of a composting toilet. Okay. So these are modern composting toilets. Okay. So these one are modern composting toilets that you can see in Japan. We also have urine diverting toilets. Uh, this one separates the urine from the uh, feces. Okay. And we have uh, various dehydrating system toilets that will now dehydrate the, the, the feces uh, so that it can be used again for fertilizer. They also have the vacuum system. Uh, most of the male CRs, the male urinals, urinals in, in UERM are vacuum systems. So there's no water in the vacuum system. So what is septage management? Yeah. Septage management pertains to the handling treatment and disposal of septage in an environmentally acceptable manner. So this is the basic concept of a septic tank. So the septic tank should be multi-chambered. This is a, 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 a poorly 
uh, manage septic tank. So there should be two chambers. It should be watertight. As you can see, uh, there's a concrete barrier, barrier all throughout the septic tank. It should be properly sized and accessible for the sludging. So this is the access opening for the sludging. Okay. So this is a poorly uh, managed septic tank. Uh, okay, so this is an ex another example of uh, a septic tank. So we have the two chambers and uh, watertight. Okay, so there's a concrete uh, barrier all throughout the septic tank. This is a, another example of a poorly constructed septic tank. So this is not watertight. As you can see, there's no flooring. Most of the septic tank, uh, I, my parents belong to the construction business, and most of the septic tanks that we have done through the years are like this one. Okay, So there's no flooring. Okay. The reason why, according to the, the, the engineers that we had before, the reason why they are doing this is, is so that the septic tank will not be full of water. Okay, So the water will go to the, the, the ground. But that's precisely the point why we want the septic tank to be uh, watertight so that there will be no effluent, liquid effluent that will contaminate the drinking water. Okay. And this one, the septic tank, is too near the source of drinking water. So this is a, a, a poorly constructed septic tank, and like this one, okay, so at least 20 meters from the source of the drinking water. So if this is what is happening, then as you can see, the, the water being drunk by the boy will be chocolate-flavored water. So these are well-maintained septic tank. Okay. So we have the sludge here or the feces, the cloudy look, liquid effluent. Then this should go. So this is coming from the uh, CR, from the comfort room of the house. Then this is supposed to go to the sewerage system. Okay. For the sewage treatment, so just like the water treatment facilities, we have the screening then grit removal or removal of the uh, of the of the big materials. So when I visited the the wastewater treatment facilities in in Balara, uh, that service UP, uh, we saw a lot of materials that you'll be amazed. Uh, the materials coming from from the from the CRs. So we have basketballs, we have shoes. I don't know how a shoe can can go to the to the to the to the CR, then a lot most of the of the materials that that goes uh, to the wastewater treatment facilities are actually the the tissues and napkins that the uh, female uh, students use. Okay, so do not throw your your napkins in in the comfort room. Okay. And after that, we have the primary sedimentation uh, for the primary slash, uh, then biological treatment uh, by microorganisms, then tertiary treatment, and this discharge to the receiving area. So I have a video later on. You can, you can view the video of how Manila water actually conducts the wastewater treatment okay, and septage treatment. Okay, So you can see the video later. And so this is an example of the uh, sewage treatment. So the primary treatment, the treatment process, primary treatment is for the separation of the solids from the uh, liquid effluent. Secondary treatment is where in the microorganisms are introduced for biological treatment. And tertiary treatment is the removal of microorganisms, nutrients, primary pollutants and gases, chlorination, and ultraviolet radiation. So after the tertiary treatment, these wastewater are supposed to be clean already. Okay. Uh, and in the wastewater treatment in Balara, the, the engineer there, after uh, at the end of the wastewater treatment, the engineer uh, showed us the faucet, the faucet where the the end product of the wastewater treatment goes. Uh, there's a pan there with with uh, tilapia, with, with tilapia. Uh, they also eat the tilapia from the pond. 
uh, and the engineer challenged us to drink the water uh, coming from the faucet. Uh, he even drank the water to show us that the water is really clean, but none of us drank that water. No way. From the Philippine Sanitation Source Book and Decision Aid. So these are the types of household wastewater that we have. We have the yellow water for the urine, the brown water for the feces, and the gray water coming from the laundry area, the shower area, and the bathroom and the kitchen. So all of these uh, is called the sewage water. Okay. So when you combine the two, we call that as black water. So for the feces, characteristics of this water. Uh, these are hygienically critical and consist of organics, nutrients, and trace elements. It can improve soil quality and increase its water retention capacity. The urine water is less hygienically critical and contains the largest proportion of nutrients available to plants, uh, but it also may contain hormones and medical residues. The gray water has no major hygienic concern. It is the largest portion of the wastewater and contains almost no nutrients, but it do contain uh, chemicals coming from soaps and, and the likes. Aside from wastewater treatment facilities, we also have waste stabilization funds in the Philippines. Okay, so these are waste stabilization funds, wastewater stabilization funds. Okay, so the principle here is stabil stabilizing the wastewater and oxidation and then polishing. We also have engineered reed beds, just like this one. Okay, so the engineered reed beds are actually for, again, purification and filtration of the water. So these reed beds will, will filter the water out, the wastewater. Uh, we have this uh, city of Bayawa Negros Oriental, uh, first constructed wetland in the Philippines for domestic wastewater. So they have reed plants in there. So in summary, I have discussed the current uh, Philippine situation when it comes to uh, septage uh, and uh, and solid waste and, and, and excreta disposal. I have showed you the different types of toilet facilities in the Philippines uh, and samples of those toilet facilities. I have shown you sewage treatment. Um, and please, so that's the end of the lecture. Please. Uh, Go to the next lecture on, I think the next lecture will be uh, solid waste management. So please view the lecture on solid waste management. And also, uh, please view the video on uh, wastewater treatment by Manila Water. I, uh, I have the video also on Canvas so that you will be more attuned on how uh, wastewater treatment is being done. So again, thank you very much and good day.